Hello, dear fellows. We are starting our journey through evidence-based medicine, MLW. So, come and start with us first week. Our group is group one through track two. Dr. Muhammad Hamzawi, Dr. Nabila Gazdar, and me, Heba Usama, year two fellow. Ahsha Abdel Hamid and me, uh, Amira Fawzi, year one fellow, with advisor, Dr. Sara Kamel. By the end of the first week, we can define evidence-based medicine, outline importance of evidence-based medicine, and also explore limitations of evidence-based medicine application. What is meant by evidence-based medicine? Evidence-based medicine is defined as the conscientious, explicit, and judicious use of current past evidence in making decisions about the care of individual patients. Also, evidence-based medicine application means relating individual clinical science, individual clinical experience with the best scientific evidences obtained by the clinical research. In other words, evidence-based medicine is a systematic approach to clinical problem solving, which allows the integration of best available research evidence with the clinical expertise and with patients' values. In importance of evidence-based medicine, we found that it enables clinicians to update knowledge base routinely, improve understanding of research methods, and it makes physicians become more critical in use of data and increase their confidence in managing management of decisions. We found also that it uh, gives better reading habits provides a framework for group problem solving, team generating a practice, and it transforms weakness or positive of knowledge into positive change. Now, what is the limitation facing evidence-based medicine application? The first limitation facing it is uh, uh, time consuming, as we need time for team conferencing, planning, and review, also to learn and practice. Additionally, there is need for financial sources to establish infrastructure, library, office, computer, and so on. One of the most important limitations is the information overload in application of evidence-based medicine. Also, it exposes gaps in the evidence, but we can get benefit of this by providing ideas for researchers. Last of all, physician attitude itself can be the greatest limitation. So we can summarize the first week in two. Evidence-based medicine can be defined as integration of best developer research evidence, clinical expertise with patient values. Limitations are summarized mainly in time skills and financial cost. Thank you. This is a presentation for the week two evidence-based medicine with our group one, track two. I hope this uh, work uh, will be uh, fruitful and beneficial for all uh, female fellow. Indeed, in, through the week two, we try to uh, answer how to practice. Uh, this is caricature that uh, uh, maybe uh, explore that uh, now the practice from the laptop or mobile phone side to the bedside. Now you have to uh, to search, you have to ask, you have to find the uh, most updated uh, evidence-based medicine. And this is our uh, work. Uh, you have to search uh, before to practice. The content will be uh, uh, ILOs, uh, introduction, that, uh, for example, for daily practice, steps for evidence-based medicine, summary, and then conclusion, and we have uh, a nice assignment, and for if you would like to uh, increase your uh, knowledge and background, you may 
uh, uh, like to check uh, this reference. Regarding to the ILOs, at the end of this session, the fellow will be able to identify steps of evidence-based medicine or evidence-based practice, know how to perform a critical appraisal of the evidence, validate the best evidence-based uh, medicine. Regarding to the daily practice, this is a real example. Our colleagues that try to put much effort to find the daily practice example. Most ophthalmologists facing this question during their daily practice. Mom said, Hi, my child spent lots of time playing with a smartphone. I'm worried as it might adversely affect his eyesight. Indeed, reference to the truth versus myth. The truth, poor sight and smartphone, this is a big, uh, big title. So how ophthalmologists go to check this based on evidences? So now we will cover that step of evidence-based medicine at the first. Regarding two steps, firstly, asking and answerable questions, acquiring best evidences, appraising the evidences, applying the evidence, and assessing the performance after that. But evidence-based medicine, regarding to the, our question, or our case, daily practice, child mother problem was, my child is spent lots of time playing with a smartphone and she was worried as it the my my adversely affects his eye sight so may discard it now if you would like to asking answerable question in children with too much near work activity does the risk to develop myopia increase The question development frame is a very important as Coco Pop. What is the meaning of Coco Pop? It's not only Coco Pop, what it's uh, uh, children's sweets or maybe adult sweeteners also. But Coco Pop is a acronym for condition or problem. Context the question is set and population being examined or being investigated. Question development frame works maybe Bayo. Bayo is a population or exposure of interest you try to identify and outcome to examine. The question development frame works also maybe Biko that population or problem, intervention or exposure that to try to search, comparison or control group, and outcomes or results of the study to examine. Question development frame may be not only PICO, but also PICOS, that in addition to the population problem, intervention or exposure, comparison or control may be outcomes to examine and lastly study type that may be affected type of evidence the question development frameworks may be picot in addition population intervention comparison outcome and the time frame or type of the study not only type but also time frame That question development frameworks BERT population, index test, reference test, and diagnosis of interest.
steps of evidence-based medicine that may be spider. Oh, you have a take care from spider. Spider is a sample phenomenon of interest. You may need to investigate this phenomenon that myopia, if it's correlated with a, a something like a, a smartphone or not, design of the study and evaluation, and lastly, research type. Steps of evidence-based medicine continue that you may need to ask a focused one question that used Biko. Biko here in our real and daily example, Biko is a child with a too much time playing with a smartphone. I, that near work activity, this is the intervention, and control C, child with a less time playing with a smartphone games, and outcomes that near sightness or myopia. Acquiring best evidence for answering this question or other questions, you have to think about evidence based medicine pyramids that start from the at least case control study or case uh, report and lastly the level of evidence at high for randomized control study and systematic review the for acquiring best evidence for answering the question you have to think about cochrane library pubmed and medline you have to search in this up to date and scp journal Club. For the acquiring the best evidence for answering the question, this is a, you have to think about PubMed, for example, and it's very one of the trustful source. This is a PubMed, like you can think about this a keyword. Now, we have to shift to the critical appraisal for the evidences for validity. A reference to validity, we have threats, threat to the internal validity and the threats to external validity. A reference to internal validity from cause to the effect, and, you ha and we have in the study from the cause to effect confounder, and you have to uh, think about the confounder. And now, if you think about the confounder, you have to think about selection bias. And the, regarding to the external validity, cause leading to effects, and you have to think about unique conditions to also to think about unique participants. For the critical appraisal of the evidence for validity, internal validity, the investigator have to be very careful to study in regarding to the study planning and have adequate quality control and implementation strategies that resulted to adequate recruitment and the adequate data collection, data analysis, and uh, uh, suitable and comparable sample size. Reference to the external validity can be increased by using indeed inclusion criteria have to be very broad. If you would like to do like the trail life, you have to select broad inclusive criteria, not very uh, tight one. So, that critical appraisal, that definition of the internal validity, this is a degree in which the experiment is error free and this a measure of experiment accuracy and we try to the uh, refer to the how strongly that a study uh, may be uh, appropriated that used to uh, the alternative explanation for the finding some evidences but the external validity this is the degree to which the research method can be applied or not and examine whether or nor the uh, uh, example relationship that uh, uh, and uh, 
relationship focused during this experiment or not yet. And it's used also uh, to uh, generalize the result. If you uh, uh, expand and increase the inclusion criteria, as I mentioned before, for external validity, that means the results can be generalized because you take a high number of a sample size and the broad inclusion criteria like real uh, life. Cats. We have a cat in evidence-based medicine. Yes, meow. The cats your meaning. Critical appraisal tools. A critical appraisal tools, a critical appraisal can occur through an unstructured approach where you critically read the study as you read. That means if you going without a tool, a specific tool for critical appraisal, so you will appraise and assess the study uh, after reading based on your uh, different factors, not uh, the same, uh, or you, you are not able to identify that tools or specific tools for the appraise the study. So, critical appraisal tools is one of its advantages that you can apply a level of consistency when you're receiving a, when you're reviewing number of studies. However, potential disadvantage of this that may not ask about the potential resources of the bias is only important about uh, that uh, tool for appraisal and not uh, important for a specific research question being asked. This is uh, one of the uh, other uh, issues regarding to the cats. A reference to the cat checklist that will be uh, uh, delivered and uh, uh, provided for you. This is a checklist example for a CASP. When you are uh, reading a research CASP has a appraisal checklist designed for using a uh, systematic review and a randomized control trial and other studies, just this is a checklist. You may uh, uh, use it or you have to use it when you uh, uh, answer uh, and do our uh, assignment, indeed. The fourth one is that applying the evidence. Now you have to apply and discuss the evidence you have to find with your patient. And finally, when you try to assess the performance, this is the important step and the fifth one also. To evaluate the outcome of the information you used and for a particular case. It checks the effectiveness and the efficiency of the information applied and maybe possible improvement of the clinical practice. So, the summary, 5A step of evidence-based medicine. Ask, acquire, appraise, apply, and assess. This is a 5A. The critical appraisal for evidence validity, just to uh, remember, that cause lead to effects for internal validity. You have a confounder and you think about selection bias. And for external validity, cause lead to the effect. You have to think about unique, unique conditions and unique participants. Conclusion At 21th century, clinicians who can't critically read a study is unprepared, unprepared as one who can't take a blood pressure, or as a clinician who can't take a blood pressure. This is the British Medical Journal mentioned this at 2008. This is very important, state squat and very uh, descriptive about the importance about uh, evidence-based medicine and the clinician have to deal with this. This is reference if you would like to check or to uh, increase uh, 
background and now thank you and good luck bye bye